Hey, what's up guys? It's James Simon here and welcome back to another tech tip video on FL Studio 11 here on Sonic Academy. In this episode, we're going to be looking at triggered send reverb. And what I mean by this is that we're going to be using reverb on a send channel, on auxiliary channel, and we're going to be controlling the volume of that, which is going to be triggered using a synthesizer, um, which is obviously then triggered through MIDI. And we're going to be using a sidechain compressor to kind of duck the reverb when the sound plays, when the lead plays, and then allow it to release when the sound's not playing. So let's have a little listen to what we're going to be looking at. So it's a pretty cool sound and hopefully you can hear what we're going to be looking at. Obviously when these first two notes played you didn't hear any reverb and when they stopped playing we could then hear the reverb kind of sucking, the volume was kind of coming up and then when this note played it was going back down again and then up when it wasn't playing and then back down and so on. So in order to set this up the first thing we're going to do is we've got our three leads and let's have just a quick listen to see what they sound like with none of the effects on. It's obviously not very interesting, pretty boring, and very dry indeed. So we've got our three leads, and they're all linked to a different mixer channel. These are then all linked to the bus channel. So as you can see down here, we have changed the routing from going to the master. We unroute it from the master. We then route it to the bus channel. It's pretty important, as we then want to send the bus channel, we want to send that to our reverb send channel, which is here. And on FL Studio to do that, it would be set as default like this. And then we send it up the volume, send it up with this toggle here. So we're going to just remove that and we'll set a new uh, a new send channel up. So the first thing we're going to do is add our reverb. And then the next thing we're going to do is turn this uh, this toggle here, we're going to turn that all the way to zero. This is basically the dry wet. So this is 100% dry and it's 100% wet. Really important that you turn this to 100% wet, otherwise the technique won't work. And also anything on a sends channel has to be 100% wet anyway, as all we want to hear coming out of this channel is the wet signal. We don't want to hear any of the dry signal, as it will already be coming out of the bus, which means we'll just be doubling up on the sound signal. So once we've turned that to 100% wet, we're going to look at doing a low cut. Usually with main leads, I will increase the low cut up to maybe about 600 hertz, maybe a little bit higher because you don't want any of that kind of low end on the reverb. But with this type of sound, as it's, we want to make it sound as big as possible, we want to keep the reverb sounding quite nice and warm, we're going to leave the low cut quite low as well. We can give it a little bit extra high, turn the room size up to the maximum, make the color warmer, and then let's just up the decay a little bit. And we're going to turn the reverb to 100% as well. So let's then go back to our lead bus. And then we're going to go to our send channel volume toggle. And we're going to just up the volume of this. So we'll leave it there for the time being, about 84 85%. And then the next thing we're going to do is add a Fruity Limiter. Now, the Fruity Limiter is quite a cool plugin. Not only does it do limiting, it's also a compressor as well. And this works particularly well when you want to use this to control the sidechain compression on a send channel. So in order to turn it into a compressor, we literally press this comp button here. And then in order to send the signal from the lead bus and for the compressor to use that as the trigger we need to use the sidechain option here and we need to change that to the corresponding channel that we're going to want to use as a trigger so it's exactly the same way that you would use your kick drum as a trigger for sidechain compression on anything else such as your bass or your main leads or anything else that you want to kind of use sidechain compression on. Exactly the same way, but instead of using a kick drum, which is obviously landed on every beat, we're using the lead 
bus, which is only going to hit on you know the exact MIDI notes. So then we're going to move this up to number 11 because that is the channel that the lead bus is on. We're then going to up the ratio and we're going to pull back on the threshold. Now let's have a listen now. So instantly we can hear that it's ducking the uh, reverb when the lead sound is hitting and you can f actually see it on the graph here. So when the lead is hitting, we can see that it's ducking it by about maybe 70, 80% and then it's releasing it in full. But to be honest, it didn't really sound very good. It wasn't kind of very groovy or rhythmic. So then we want to play around with some of these extra settings here to help improve the kind of overall uh, gel, the kind of way that it glues with the kick and the bass. So we're going to use this uh, toggle here, which is called Look Ahead. Uh, so it says Ahead on there, but it's actually Look Ahead is the full name. And basically what this does, the FL limiter has a nice built-in kind of algorithm that looks ahead like by a, you know, a very, very small amount, and it will know what's coming up to allow it to react in a certain way that isn't um, kind of defined by the attack. So it will look ahead at what's coming and then know what it needs to do afterwards. So rather than controlling the attack with the attack, we can kind of troll it with the look ahead. So if we listen to the sound and I'll pull the look ahead and you can kind of see what it does. So as you can hear, it was kind of changing the way it was a little bit of an attack and it was a little bit of the release that it was actually changing that, making it a little bit smoother. So I'm just going to play around some, with some more of these toggles and see if I can make it even smoother. So that's sounding quite nice using the ratio controls how much it is going to duck the sound by so a higher ratio is going to duck it more a lesser ratio is obviously going to duck it less and i'm looking at the graph here to actually get a visual representation of the way that the sound is ducking and then smoothly coming back up again we don't want to see any kind of super spikes um jumping down too quickly and coming back up too quickly i think the coming back up too quickly is the main thing we want it to sound nice and smooth there's also this extra section down here which is the curve and that will control the curve of the release so let's sort of play around with that and see if we can find something nice. Usually I'll leave this on one, but we'll give it a go. So that sounded pretty nice, kept it on one, but as you can see, the more you turn the curve up, the kind of lesser effect it has. It's more of a smoother kind of uh, release that the compressor does. So there's one last thing that we're going to do, and we're going to add some EQ to the actual reverb sound itself. So we're going to go and add an EQ. And what I want to do here is well, as it says, I want to EQ the reverb sound just to bring out even more of the frequencies.
So that's sounding pretty nice. Obviously, the more you EQ, the more you boost, the louder it's going to get. So I just pulled down on the gain there a little bit. But as we can see in this area here, it was the kind of the low end, what mids to low end, where it's got quite heavy frequency kind of range. And pushing that up is really going to add some extra warmth to your sound as well. So that's pretty much it, a very nice technique to add a lot of body and kind of atmosphere to what is generally a very boring sound. I find that it works best when you're using it in a track which is very minimal, such as this, it's just a kick and a bass line. Um, it's also a very kind of common uh, EDM electronic technique where they would have, you know, maybe a large kick and bass line and then a single sound, maybe laid up a couple of times doing a very simple kind of pattern, but then using the reverb to really kind of make it sound big and push it out wide and atmospheric. In terms of the reverb and the EQ and the limiter, you know, it's all trial and error. You can do what you want. Uh, you can, dependent on the MIDI pattern, you might want to change the way that the uh, compressor acts. You might want to have a shorter release, maybe less compression, really up to you, but this is how you go about doing the technique. I hope you find that helpful and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.